morning again you guys um another update i suppose i could have just done one health update video but um i like to give them their specific titles so that you know for example if you were a guy you might not want to watch this video on what's going on with my breasts <laughs> my breast scan um and you can just watch the migraine one so i did tell you guys um i think at the end of the last migraine video or the last but one migraine video that i had found a lump and that i was going for an urgent scan now urgent scans are supposed to be two weeks but there's a delay because of covid you know that's that's the big old story isn't it um and so it took four weeks to go to the breast unit kev bless him took the day off which was actually turned out really really nice because he took me there and the biggest thing was i wasn't sure if i was going to get parked and that always makes me really anxious and it meant that i didn't have to worry about that he could just drop me off and then he could go and you know figure out a parking place um and so we were told to that we could be there up to four hours and so you were to expect that um i arrived and was told that kev couldn't come in with me that they were very busy but he could sit down and wait in the cafe um so i sat sat and waited and went in to see a consultant and so she had a look and a feel and she had a student with her and they were having a look she couldn't feel a lump and she said i can't feel a lump but we will send you downstairs for a mammogram and an ultrasound so i was like great so i went went out went downstairs spoke to kevin said right, i'm just popping in here because it's opposite the cafe is where they do the mammograms and the ultrasounds. So I said, I'm going in here, I'm going to have a mammogram and an ultrasound. Um, went through and what I noticed was, you see the same sort of um, women, you know, I, I like I knew who was in front of me and I knew who was behind me. There's a lot of women came in when I was waiting upstairs um, and they were then coming downstairs, you know, in the same kind of order. But I also noticed that some of them would go from their mammograph and go for their well mammograph or just mammograph and ultrasound and then they would I would hear them saying to them that's you you're free to go now and they would leave from the bottom um, and I realized then that if you were sent back upstairs again to see the consultant that that that, that would be because they'd found something so I my husband and I were kind of whatsapp in between us um, because I was telling him some of the things that were going on, like when I'd gone in to see the consultant, I kind of knew her, um, and like as in I'd seen her name on things, but I'd never met her, and I knew that, I only knew him as Mike the Breast Guy, <laughs> and I said to her, is Mike the Breast Guy still in charge of this unit, you know, and she said no, but he happens to be here, um, and she told me who, who was in charge now, and I said to her, you know, I used to work with him, as in helping him with studies, but I never actually met him in person. And she was like, oh, do you want to meet him? He's next door, you know, I'm sure he'd be delighted. And I was like, no, 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 you know, I was like, I'm here as a patient, like I want to stay as a patient. This is not a reunion. Although I'd seen a few nurses that I knew, I was like, this isn't a reunion for me. I'd rather just stay kind of anonymous, you know. So I was WhatsApping backwards and forwards to Kevin, said to him, you know, if you see me come out and we're just leaving, then it, it, it's fine and they found nothing. If we have to go upstairs again, I think that's when they found something. So he's like, OK, so, so I'm, give, I'm keeping all my fingers crossed for downstairs exit. Um, so they called me in to do the mammograph and I was nervous about it because a, a lot of people that I know, like my mum, for example, and a, a woman I worked with have had quite bad experiences with it. Um, in fact, one, the one girl I worked with said she was never going back again because it was so painful. Um, so yeah, I was a bit apprehensive about that. And I went in and they really move you about. I mean, I, you know, I said to the girl, that must be really awkward for her the first time she did it because you, it's so up and close, up close and personal, you know, like they literally are like, pulling your boob this way, pushing it up that way, then getting underneath you and stretching out all the skin underneath and, you know, really getting you into position and then basically flatten your boob with this plastic thing. But I have to say it was much better than I expected. It was uncomfortable. And that's something that I've been told on many procedures over the years that something, this is gonna be uncomfortable. And then it happens and I think uncomfortable, bloody hell, that was painful, you know. But this, I would say, it was uncomfortable but it was really only uncomfortable for at the last minute she sort of tightens the knob and it presses down she goes over presses a button tells you to hold your breath and it's literally a couple of seconds and then she comes and undoes it and it's fine so so that was a relief you know it's like okay had the mammograph they've done what they need to do ultrasound's never going to be painful so it's fine so i went and sat in the waiting room i then got called back um 
you know, she just called my name and took me in and I was joking at that point, like, let me guess, take your top off, you know. Um, so she said, yeah, but we're doing another mammogram. She said the consultant has seen a bit of tissue that he or she, I can't remember, is not happy with um, and has asked me to do another mammogram. And I must admit, that was the point where I thought, uh oh, you know, I was like, that doesn't sound good, does it? You know, <laughs> um, it's definitely not a everything's fine, off you go. So I had the second mammogram and it was done with a smaller piece of plastic. It was like a more targeted one and on a smaller area. Um, so I did that and she said, then we'll get you in for your ultrasound. So waited, then went in and got my ultrasound. Then I was told that I was probably gonna need biopsies. Was I told at that point? I'm pretty sure I was. Yeah, because she said, you need to come back at 12 for biopsy. So I'd been there, I think my appointment was at nine. And she gave me a little um, slip and she said, you need to take that upstairs um, and then you need to come back at 12 for biopsies. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine, you know. And I wasn't sure if, I thought, well, they've obviously seen something and want to take some biopsies, but I wasn't sure how many people that happened to. But at this point, I'm like, okay, it doesn't look like I'm leaving from downstairs. Um, so I went out, saw Kev and said, right, I need to go upstairs. And he's like, oh no. And I said, well, they've found this area of tissue. They want to do biopsies. Um, so I need to hand this slip in upstairs. And I thought I was just gonna be handing the slip in and then coming back to get the biopsies. But, so Kev came with me upstairs, but this time they said, he can come in with you. Cause I said, oh, I've just hand this in. And she said, yeah, go and sit in the waiting room and he can come with you. So I didn't know it at the time, but um, Kev was actually really nervous at this point because he was like, okay, you know, now I'm allowed in. Plus we thought we were just handing a slip in, but we've been told to wait in the waiting room. Like what's happening? So we were sitting in the waiting room. We had a laugh about something. I can't remember what, but. We always seem to, whenever there's a hotel, a hotel or hospital waiting situation, we always tend to have quite a laugh. And so that was good because it kept my mind off it. Um, but we did talk about, you know, he said, do you want me to come in with you? And I was like, no, I'll be fine. I says, and if it is awful news, then I might tell her just to come and grab you. You know, if I'm really upset and I can't ask questions or take in the information she's given me, then I might send for you if you like. I said, but I'm sure I'll be fine. So she called me in and yeah, that's where it was like, oh, okay. She, firstly, she said, there's a grading system between zero and five. And she, she told me what zero, one and two were. And I remember that like either zero, one or two, one of them was like no cancer. Um, five was like definitely cancer and aggressive. Four was cancer and three was not sure. And she said, you've been graded a three. And I said, all right. I said, do I need to call my husband in? And she said, well, it's not full blown cancer, if that's what you mean. And I said, oh, OK, then. And she said it. We're not sure, which is why we need to do biopsies, she said. But what they think it is, is ductal carcinoma in situ. Well, of course, I knew carcinoma because I've dealt with so many studies of different carcinomas. And so when she said ductal carcinoma, I was like, and she said, I know. She said, I know that sounds like I'm telling you you've got cancer, she said, but it's ductal carcinoma in situ she said so it is basically it's like the same thing that happens with the cervix and that happened to me that it's there and it if you didn't come back for a couple of years if you hadn't have come to get a mammogram for a couple of years it would have been cancerous it would it it's pre-cancer it develops into cancer so it's ductal carcinoma in situ in other words it is a milk duct cancer waiting um, and just the passage of time, it will turn into cancer. And I was like, okay, you know, that is pretty scary, um, but also makes me feel very lucky because she said, I'm, you know, I'm so glad you've come today. And she said, the, the lumps, there are a lot of lumps in my boobs, apparently. There are a few cysts. She said, and we can see that they're cysts and they're well defined, but they, and they're probably what's causing me the pain. But then there's this other bit of suspicious tissue that they think is the, ductal carcinoma DCIS they call it and so it's just divine intervention if you will you know like the fact that I went in and she was like I'm so glad you've come in today so that's what we think it is she said there is a chance it could be papillomas which are warts so um but that's less likely than the the ductal carcinoma in situ um and she said there is a small chance it's nothing and there's a small chance that it's 
worse that it is cancer but she said those are both unlikely at this stage um, but you've been graded a three as not sure we need to get these biopsies so she then um, made an appointment for me which is on Monday Monday the what is it 25th or something no can't be 25th 28th it must be what day is it today Wednesday Monday the 28th yes yeah, so I've got a, a, an appointment on Monday the 28th in the afternoon to go and see her to get the results of the biopsy and talk about a treatment plan um, because the thing with um, if it is this ductal carcinoma that she thinks it is in situ then it still needs to be removed because obviously it could come back or it could become cancer and so I would need to have surgery to remove it and depending on how big it is you, you can even need radiation so that's all very scary you know obviously surgery is something that is probably the thing that scares me the most because because of my blood pressure and cholesterol results recently have not been good like they've been pretty bad so I, I got a private test and had a plaque um, blood test done and it's shown that my arteries are not great at all so I'm really trying to work on that um, and that would scare me surgery wise but I'm trying to not think of it I haven't googled believe it or not um, my mum has and <laughs> she told me a couple of things Kev hasn't either we both discussed it and it's weird because normally I would immediately google everything and immediately research it but I don't want to research it and freak myself out if I end up going on Monday and they're like you know what it's actually warts or it's something different or, or you know whatever I just want to wait until I've got the actual confirmation as to what it is and see what they tell me um, and take it from there so actually one of the things I keep thinking is my appointment's on Monday and then on that Saturday I'm going to the dog lovers show and it's something that I really really enjoy I go on my own um, I've been with my friend before but I actually really like going on my own and she's feeling a bit funny about crowds and whatnot still so the great thing about being on your own is you know you can just stay there for as long as you want and then go um and so I can't wait and I just kept thinking oh, I hope my surgery wouldn't be before then because I don't want to miss that you know I really want to go to that um so yeah so that was Friday today is Wednesday so that was last Friday that all happened I went back at 12 o'clock I had the biopsies they numb the whole area so you get local anesthetic which is probably the most painful part at the time um I, I couldn't believe how many people there were in the room there was like five people there was the radiologist the oncologist who I don't know whether she, was she the oncologist that was doing the surgery anyway uh, there was two nurses and then there was a fifth person who I had no idea who she was but there was five people around me and I was like wow this is like a big um what's the word I mean use of resources you know <laughs> there was a lot of people in that room and I was like it would be a really hard logistics to organize that center because they don't know who's going to end up needing biopsies on the day and it could be a really busy day where 10 people needed biopsies or it could be an easy day where 10 people or, or all but 10 people needed to go away you know what I mean I'm not saying it very well but um then they never know what resources they're going to need um anyway it wasn't painful at all it was it, it was uncomfortable because I had to sort of be on my side and keep my arm up like that but um it was fine the nurses were chatting to me holding my hand you know the way they do they're so lovely and the whole thing the whole process was very slick actually both Kevin and I said it was amazing and you can't it's days like that that you can't complain about the NHS because you know from having a lump to four weeks later I'm there having everything in one go you know I had ultrasounds and two mammographs and and biopsies all in one day all in the same day and so that was really good um so then they put um paper stitches on it it's just sort of underneath my boob it's underneath the nipple where they went in and um gave me the instructions and off I went um I was in a bit of pain later on that day obviously when the anaesthetic wore, wore off and on Saturday I was in quite a bit of pain but nothing that painkillers wouldn't take away and it was really just it was most painful like if Watson wanted to lean against me I was like oh no we can't be doing that you know um and I couldn't have a bath which I was annoyed at because I was like if I'd have known that I'd have showered before I went on the Friday but I didn't know that and I normally have a bath in the evening but you couldn't get the, it wet for 24 hours um, so I had you know what they call a gypsy wash um, and then by I think by yesterday when I could take the paper stitches off which I have done it was feeling a lot better and so I, I barely know I can if I sort of push my boobs up I can kind of feel that it's bruised it now just looks very bruised but it doesn't look at all as bad as I thought it would so now it's just a waiting game but um I was all right on Saturday Sunday Monday I, I wasn't really you know I kept thinking to myself like 
oh my goodness, like this is quite major, but I seem to just be feeling lucky. And so I thought it's good that I'm feeling positive and, but I'm not really sure that that's appropriate, if that makes any sense. You know, I was thinking it's almost like I should be a bit more upset or a bit more worried because I am a worrier and I wasn't worrying. I was just like, okay, I just feel really lucky. Um, but then yesterday I had such a bad migraine day and I was feeling really, really dark yesterday, like really dark, like, like I was saying to Kev, you know, maybe my time here is done. Like maybe I've given everything I've got to give to this world. You just never know when your time's up kind of thing. I don't mean suicidal, not at all. There are definitely times when I don't want to live like this with my migraines, but I don't mean that I, I would never ever do that. But I was just feeling like, what is the point? You know, I've got, I, I also was a bit kind of woe is me, like this is so unfair. Like I've got these migraines to deal with and now I've got to try and, battle whatever this is you know and maybe have surgery and other stuff going on for that as well I'll never know what the hell is making me feel tired or dizzy or whatever you know <laughs> between all of these things going on and it wasn't only those things there's other things going on as well like I said the blood pressure and the cholesterol results my blood pressure's high and I've got this indigestion thing that's kind of I'm assuming it's indigestion, but I'm having problems swallowing. When I'm swallowing food, it's burning as it gets to the middle of my chest. So the doctor's given me a double dose of lansoprasol, which I'm on, and I have to try that for two weeks. And if not, I suspect I'll need to get um, another thing down the throat, you know. And I just was thinking, like, is is this somehow the end? Is it the, is it the indigestion? Is it the breast thing? Is it... Um, or am I just going to be stuck with these migraines forevermore? Like, you know, I just was, I just had a really dark day and it was really miserable. But, you know, Kev came home and I had a cry. And for the first time ever, I managed to not eat my feelings. Because normally on a day like that, we would be like, right, let's go for a McDonald's. Or I would have some crisps and a Bacardi or something like that. And I was like, no. So I had a little packet of cheddars, um, but just had my Diet Coke. And I didn't have any Bacardi or anything. So I was quite pleased with myself at that. Um... And then today I'm just back to feeling okay about it. Um, I spoke to my mum, I phoned my mum because she's been quite upset about it all and quite worried about it all, which is really sweet, my birth mum. I haven't actually told my other mum, but I'm, because I've told my sister and I'm assuming my sister will tell her. Um, it's hard because I don't really phone anybody, you know, because of the migraines, so it's difficult. And they've got, there's so much going on there, so much worse than what I'm going through, even if this is ductal carcer and, there's cancer going on with on that side of the family and it's just it's it's hideous it's something that you know you wouldn't wish on anybody but um and I've told my brother as well because the weird thing was I don't very often speak to my brother but on Friday he happened to send me a Facebook messenger message just saying how are you so it was really unusual that he sent it then I didn't see it until yesterday and responded to him yesterday and he's like oh, you know if you need anything let me know blah 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 and think positive and you know he was he's really he was really good about it I was worried that he was going to be worried actually because he was very much like my dad um in fact I would say my biggest concern has been other people you know like how how's like I was worried about my mum worrying about it because she was saying she was feeling tearful and you know not sleeping and I was like oh no I don't want that I don't want to do that to anybody you know um and I was worried my dad, my brother would be like that. And I, one of the things I was so grateful for was that my dad isn't here to see me going through this because I would have had to have told him or it's like it, because if I told anybody else in my family, it would get back to everybody else, you know? Um, and so I would have had to have told him and I would have, I'm not the type of person that can really keep secrets, but I know he would have taken it badly and he would have been really worried and really like I would have been looking after him worrying about me I know that for a fact you know so I'm really glad that I don't have that to worry about even though of course I'd do anything for my dad to be back but I'm sure you'll understand exactly what I mean but I, I, the thing is it could be nothing you know I could get there on Monday and she could say actually it isn't the ductal carcinoma in situ and it isn't papillomas it's just nothing it's just cysts and so you're free to go go on and enjoy your life you know this thing in my chest that I'm worried about this swallowing thing could be nothing um, it could just be indigestion because that's part of Ehlers Danlos is I've got gastro reflux disease and it could just be that getting worse. And the only reason I think I'm worrying about this is because I went along to the breast scan expecting that it was just going to be a cyst and I would be going away with and that's it, you know, not worrying about it anymore. When you get told that it could be something, 
you then think, well, well, it could be something. Everything could be something, you know. And so when I, when I look, I shouldn't have Googled this, but I did Google the swallowing problems and was like, oh God, <laughs> it is a sign of something serious, you know, but it's also a sign of indigestion. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on. Um, I don't know whether I'll upload this video now and then do another video when I go on Monday. It depends how my head is and you know how I'll get on with editing, but if I don't get it edited in time, then I'll just wait and do another video on Monday and tell you, of course, what the results are. So um, that's everything for now. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for all your well wishes. You've all been great. I've put it on Instagram and everybody's been, you know, the thoughts are with me, prayers are with me, that kind of thing. So that's lovely. So um, yeah, I shall speak to you soon.